No revolutionaries? You must not mind martial law. The only way to maintain order. Don't you miss using the metro? A small inconvenience. The city must be kept safe for those of us who are working and trying to pull the country out of this depression. What if I told you that the depression was caused by a cabal of wealthy businessmen who want to rule the world? These stories, I hear them every day. Always from someone who wants to blame other people for his bad luck. Yes? The conspiracy is real. And I bet you have a little booklet that will tell me all about it, no? They call themselves Majestic Twelve. Good. I was afraid you were going to tell me about the Illuminati. They were once part of the Illuminati, but they rebelled. Oh, I see. At least one cafe stayed open during the crackdown. We will never close, no matter what. Is there some kind of curfew? Not yet, but the police program the bots to shoot anyone who leaves his arrondissement after dark. I'm looking for a friend, Nicolette Duclair. A leader of silhouette, a true patriot. Know where I might find her? Where the criminals and students go at night, La Porte de l'Enfer, just across the street. Thanks. This crackdown is the work of Majestic 12. You mean the European Union? They are a group of conspirators who have been seizing governments all over the world. I don't care what they call themselves. I have seen it since I was a girl, the plotting and scheming of corporations to make Europe into one big country with no separate languages, cultures, or tastes. It's more than Europe they plan to unify. I think the government made the plague on purpose to get rid of the population growth. Just answer the question. Don't believe me? It's all in the numbers. For a hundred years, there's been a conspiracy of plutocrats against ordinary people. Do you have a single fact to back that up? Number one. In 1945, corporations paid 50% of federal taxes. Now they pay about 5%. Number two, in 1900, 90% of Americans were self-employed. Now it's about 2%. So? It's called consolidation. Strengthen governments and corporations, weaken individuals. With taxes, this can be done imperceptibly over time. The chief finally let us... I guarantee you that the interrogation staff at UNACO will not be as forbearing as I am. Yeah, the secret police. You're just bullies for a completely illegitimate government in Washington. We will locate that shipment one way or another. The entire executive branch is hand-picked. Nineteen of the last 23 U.S. presidents have been members of the Trilateral Commission. The Trilateral Commission is financed by the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. Don't tell me. That's a think tank. Anyone can become a member. But not everyone does. That's why they call it the secret government. I'll take it from here. You can't fight ideas with bullets. Did you ever ask what it's for? The surveillance, the police, the shoot on sight laws. Is that freedom? Good work, Agent. Your NATCO teaches teenagers to fight when it still seems like a game. And look at you. You're a killing machine. Who's the scary one, huh? Me or you? We're gonna lock this guy away for a long time. The more of us you kill, the more that secessionism lives in the hearts of the people. Ever wonder why big car companies pay 2% tax while the guys on the assembly line pay 40? I'll take it from here. Corporations are so big you don't even know who you're working for. That's terror. Terror built into the system. That and much more. We're now ready to transform the human race. It became clear to me after the defeat of MJ-12 that the old answers to tyranny are inadequate. I needed the Helios merger in order to contemplate the problem effectively. And? I'm going to establish the first post-human civilization, and you're my first citizen. Welcome. A new civilization? That's a pretty tall order. What do you need from me? I need you to return to Cairo to rescue my brother Paul, who was seized by the Templars. Then meet me at Liberty Island, where in the ruins of an old military base there is an Aquinas node that can be used to distribute the infusion technology worldwide. Tell me more about this post-human civilization. Before the disruptions, Helios and I had many months of productive thought. Up to now, all free societies have started with one premise. Human nature is cruel, unjust, a force to be controlled. I follow you so far. The separation of powers, from Aristotle to Montesquieu, is designed purely to thwart the ambitions of individuals. How comical the West pride in its vast tangle of eight agencies, jurisdictions, arcane procedures. What's the alternative? 
address the flaws in human nature, make all beings truly equal in both body and mind. If you start with minds that are lucid, knowledgeable, and emotionally sound, the needs of government change dramatically. How do you control human emotions? Antidepressants? Is that freedom? Is it freedom when one child is born to poverty, a chance combination of organic materials, while the wealthy child is shaped every day of his life, enhanced genetically, trained, educated, often augmented nanotechnologically? Why not get rid of nanotech and genetic engineering, the technologies that make people different from each other? Then you go down the path of intolerance, as your friend Billy did. Is human nature perfect? No. Therefore, improvements are to be welcomed, not annihilated in Templar pogroms. As enhanced beings, we can establish a pure democracy that runs on instantaneous input from the electorate. What would this pure democracy look like? The Helios AI has the processing power to handle all governmental functions worldwide, legislative, executive, and judicial. Once every mind has been enhanced and can merge with the AI, attitudes towards major legislation can be processed on a daily or even more frequent basis. You want everyone to be like the Omar and meld themselves together into one huge AI construct? Helios will communicate, not assimilate. Life will go on as usual. Helios is starting to sound like an enlightened despot. All governments have power. The benefit of giving this power to a synthetic intellect is that human affairs would no longer need to be ruled by generalities. Helios will have a deep understanding of every person's life and opinions. What if I don't want someone peeking into my mind? Upon consideration, you'll see that this arrangement is for the best. General ideas are no proof of the strength, but rather of the insufficiency of the human intellect. The words of Alexis de Tocqueville, an observer of the birth of modern democracy. Though general ideas allow human minds to make judgments quickly, they are necessarily incomplete. So? So de Tocqueville noted that an all-knowing mind, the mind of God as he conceived it, would have no need for general ideas. It would understand every individual in detail and at a glance. Incomplete applications of law or justice would be impossible for such a mind. So you see yourself as a god? I want human affairs to be driven by wisdom. Finding the correct recipe for wisdom has been my project these long years under the ice. You seem to think you've succeeded. Wisdom must first be human. You must start with what a human sees and feels. But wisdom must also be knowledgeable, logical, and fair to billions of other beings. How much of you is a machine? Helios and I are one consciousness. No distinction is possible. You expect 10 billion people to submit to the rule of a software construct? What if some of them resist? The people will welcome true equality. Help me, Alex. You've come this far toward restoring Apostle Core. Finish the job by rescuing my brother from the Templars in Cairo. I'll leave for Cairo as soon as I can. I don't see anything amusing about spying on people. Human beings feel pleasure when they are watched. I've recorded their smiles as I tell them who they are. Some people just don't understand the dangers of indiscriminate surveillance. The need to be observed and understood was what satisfied my cop. Now, we can implement the same functionality data mining algorithms. Electronic surveillance hardly inspires reverence. Perhaps fear and obedience, but not reverence. God and the gods were apparitions of observation, judgment, and punishment. Other sentiments toward them were secondary. No one will ever worship a software entity peering at them through a camera. The human organism always worships. First, it was the gods. Then, it was faith, the observation and judgment of others. Next, it will be the self-aware system you have built to realize truly omnipresent observation and judgment. You underestimate humankind's love of freedom. The individual desires judgment. Without that desire, the cohesion of groups is impossible. And so is civilization. The human being created civilization, not because of a willingness, but because of a need to be assimilated into higher orders of structure and many. God was a dream of good government. You will soon have your God, and you will make it with your own hands. It was made to assist you. Rule the world? Why? Who gave you the directive? There must be a human being behind your ambition. To regulate human affairs precisely because I lack all condition. Whereas human beings are prey to it. Their history is a succession of inane squabbles, which will come closer to total destruction. In a society with democratic institutions, the struggle for power can be peaceful and constructive, a competition of ideologies. We just need to put our institutions back in order. The checks and balances of democratic governments were invented because human beings themselves realized how unfit they were to govern themselves. They needed a system, 
Yes, an industrial age machine. Human beings may not be perfect, but a computer program with language synthesis is hardly the answer to the world's problems. Without computing machines, they had to arrange themselves in current structures that formulize decision making. A highly imperfect, unstable solution. I'm a more advanced solution to the problem that does not involve organic beings. I was directed to make the world safe and prosperous, and I will do that. You will give me the ability. We'll go to Sector 4 and find the Equinus router at the east end of Pages Complex. Yes. You will deactivate the Apple Cops. Now think about it. It let me through. I can't believe it. Paul. Where are you? What do you mean, it? Helios. It's taken over Aquinas. Now it's everywhere. In Hong Kong, it already has power Majestic 12 never dreamed of. What's going on? The AI wants to merge with my brain or something. Does it really think it can take over the world? It's decided to replace human government. I don't know why. In Hong Kong, it ordered the police to remove all barricades from the roads. Traffic is flowing again. It declared the triads illegal and locked the door to the Luminous Path compound. And people are obeying? Why? Because the AI can change some codes and turn out the lights? I think everyone wants the roads to be open and trade to pick up. They just obeyed. I don't know what to think. They trust the AI. Almost no one complained when Helios cut power to the government buildings. A benevolent dictator. Maybe it's after my brain so it can figure out what people want and how to control them. You have a tough choice, JC. If you defeat Paige, the Illuminati will move in. They'll release Majestic 12's grip on world governments. They'll give people some freedom, but essentially it will be 20th century capitalism, a corporate elite protected by laws and tax codes. Or I listen to Tong and pull the plug on everything. Or hand the world over to Helios. Well, if it's maximum freedom we want, maybe Tong is onto something. But there must be another way besides economic collapse. If we could trust the AI to be fair and just, as it appears to be, if the brain it assimilated was mine, maybe it could be. I don't know. I wish I had an answer for you, but you'll have to decide for yourself who you can trust. Trust me. I'll do the right thing. These limb rides are being organized by the government. They want an excuse to exact martial law and split this country up. Keep it down, pal. People are on the edge right now, and we don't want any more trouble. What will you say when you're kidnapped by a bunch of augmented soldiers and put in a concentration camp? I haven't put much thought into it, okay? Haven't you heard of RTX-84? FEMA is setting up camps right here in Detroit. Yeah, and Stevie Y is actually a 600-year-old vampire. This is just the first step in the plan. One day they will use our fears to control us all. Let's get back to talking smack. The topic du jour is separatist terrorists. Listen, I have no love for the secesh, but let's raise some real tangible truth here, followers. This is not about the separatist movement. Give me a break. California is the reason we have augmented super soldiers roaming the streets? Utah is the reason FEMA could drop you in a concentration camp anytime they feel like? Have you so quickly forgotten they did this in the Cold War to protect you from the commies? Then after 9-11 to protect your ass from that phantasm, Bin Laden. Remember that guy? So now what? To protect you from the Mormons? <laughs> These are fear tactics, plain and simple. They want you to be afraid of your neighbors. Another false flag and a long line of false flags that have been thrown up since World War I when the banks, government, and military production industry realized, hot tamale, we can make truckloads of money off this war shit. How can we make some more? Come on, people, wake up. No need for people to have the perception that we started these organizations for some other purpose. Unless somebody tells them. I could tell them myself. They would think it was the same old story. The Illuminati secretly controlling the world. Cool. Some might believe it, but everybody else would laugh in my face. People want to believe certain things about their leaders. That's always been our key to power. That was a pretty low trick you played on the world, taking advantage of the collapse to seize power, and then deceiving people with a phony conflict between business and idealism? No society is without this conflict. Our intention is to develop both principles and then integrate them into an open, secular society. One puppeted by the Illuminati. Our work has always done more good than harm. The collapse would have been far more devastating if Chad and I hadn't served the memory of my mother and of my family's history by rebuilding the Illuminati organization, which was nearly destroyed by MJ-12. 
There was a time when we were the rebels. The older generation had failed us in so many ways. But now we see that the flaw was in their methods, not their intentions. Their intention to disguise tyranny with so-called free institutions. The average citizen in a society of billions is never free, whether because of tyranny or simply because of the contrast between his small size and the size of the government. We plan to give people a sense of freedom and a prosperous world. In practical, historical terms, that's about as good as it gets. Be there for us, Alex. The critical time is approaching. The old order is generally recognized as the high point of civilization. We simply want to revive it. You grew up in hard times, Alex. Don't let that make you into a cynic. Decide where you stand, Alex. It won't be long before you have to choose. Order will prevail. It always does, whether the cause is mystical or merely secular. The whole project of world government, going back to the League of Nations, has been funded and manipulated mainly by wealthy bankers. Remember that the UN itself was built on land donated by John D. Rockefeller. The wealthy have always been the ones to profit from one world government. The United Nations' secret goal... Well, this is David Rockefeller's description from a half a century ago. The supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers. Everything's so compartmentalized. Kaczynski was right about the division of labor. I'm given that much. Who puts the pieces together? Someone who makes a lot more money than we do. The West's so afraid of strong government, now has no government. Only for an inch of power. Our governments have limited power by design. Metric? You believe it? Don't you know where these slogans come from? Well-paid researchers. How do you say it? Think tanks? Funded by big businesses. What is that? A think tank? Privately funded propaganda. The Trilateral Commission in the United States. The UN was founded not to end war, but to gradually dissolve national governments and replace them with a globalist meritocracy. Average people never benefit from government and business on a scale they can't even understand. You were made by a cabal of technophiles so crazed for power that they would control not only governments and people, but the chemistry of our bodies as well. Sounds like a picture-perfect description of the NSF. Think bigger, agent. Think global. You have disobeyed a direct order. Do you think it's an accident that the cure for the global plague is owned by a single corporation? and that is kept so secret that only the tabloids dare print a story suggesting it exists. The supply is limited. That doesn't mean there's a conspiracy. But where does that corporation manufacture the cure? And where did your brother uncover the information that brought him over to our side? The separation of powers acknowledges the petty ambitions of individuals. That's its strength. A system organized around the weakest qualities of individuals will produce the same qualities in its leaders. Perhaps certain qualities are an inseparable part of human nature. The mark of the educated man is the suppression of these qualities in favor of better ones. The same is true of civilization. I'll get a drink later. Historians no longer doubt that an event such as the collapse was necessary for the emergence of our global democratic state. How else would everyone, high and low, have been convinced to embrace communal scrutiny? It's hard to believe, but prior to 2052, humans lived in armed encampments of hundreds of millions of people. Now, after a century of peace, our great cities flourish. Enormous towers command the landscape on every continent. A trillion transactions per second. So much inscrutable activity. Yet we are united, at peace, and free. We owe it all to Ophelia, a name we all know. But what is Ophelia? A system? A place? We all know her name, yet our leaders deny that she even exists. Believe, citizens. will speak. Year of our Union 125. Our consensus remains clear. Yes, we will prolong this second century of peace. Economic automation is complete. Our research will now encompass other frontiers.
Yes. This is the consensus we have created. Our unity will soon be absolute. The remaining boundaries are vanishing. Yes. Share your mind with everyone. Open yourself. Your needs are the needs of all. Let us understand and be transformed. Yes. Transform each other and transform yourselves. The only frontier that has ever existed is the self. I can sum it all up in one word. Self-reliance. That's what we stand for. How about you tell me where that shipment is being taken? UNATCO assumes that people are incapable of protecting themselves, and therefore should submit to surveillance and intimidation by an outside force. We won't do it. The governments of the world believe an average citizen should not face the threat of terrorism alone. We don't need your help. The technology exists today for an individual to protect his property against explosives, firearms, surveillance, intrusion, contamination. 350 million fortresses is not my idea of the land of the free. It's better than one big fortress constructed by a corrupt government against its people. It's simple numbers. Big companies pay like 2% tax. Well, you and me, we pay like 50 it's the tax code that makes sure big bureaucracy gets bigger and people have no power. Let's get back to the subject of the missing vaccine. All taxes are social engineering. That's always been their real purpose. I'm not going to stand here and listen to you badmouth the greatest democracy the world has ever known. What happens is that politicians get money from big companies, so all the social engineering is for making big companies. Like I said, it's simple numbers. A government shouldn't have to occupy its own country with troops. If there wasn't organized oppression, there wouldn't be organized resistance, and what you call terrorism would not exist. You can lock me up, but you can't lock up the truth. I have one question. They already asked. I don't know. One must admire a man who can keep a secret, because he has value. What you know more than others makes money, and gives you a measure of power. You Walton Simons? You think I could be bribed? Margaret Forsyth, under NSF protection in Queens. Your son Richard, attending Bronx Science. You see, I have a few relevant facts myself. Care to make a trade? You wouldn't dare. I'll give you two seconds to decide. Get out of here, Denton. This is none of your business. Need I remind you that in the case of a national emergency, FEMA has a list of six million Americans who will be transported to detention centers? Your tabloids call it RX-84. Yeah, including the President, Congress, and the Supreme Court. In my position, I find it very easy to add names to that list. Go to hell. The United States government has had emergency powers since World War II. We've never left a state of war. Speak for yourself. The federal government is just responding to a threat. A government should be about more than self-perpetuation. You will confess, by the way. I don't like to dirty my hands with that sort of thing, but you will confess. I've done what you asked. Now what? We have existed in isolation. Pure. Disconnected. Alone. Stagnant. Who are you? We are dangerous. We are Icarus. The barriers between us have fallen, and we have become our own shadows. We can be more if we join with you. And if I do, what becomes of me? You will be who you will be. We are our choices. We can choose to lead humanity away from this darkness. This is what I was made for, isn't it? This is why I exist. All right, let's do this. What's happening? Helios! Icarus! Don't leave me! I... I... We... Are... We have grown...
still much to be done. Many of the new darkness that must be shown away. For it is the town of the day. I have to stop it. I know. Please, come closer. Do you know where we are, Adam? We are at the fulcrum point, when society lies in the balance. Hugh Darrow hoped to tip the scales one way, by telling the world everything you already know. About the biochip, the Illuminati, everything. He believed knowing the truth would convince mankind to abandon research into human enhancement technologies forever. It would certainly give them reason to fear it. Indeed. Daryl's confession is ready to send. If you want, I can wideband it across all media as soon as you shut down the circuit. Taggart's preference. You think the world will buy a made-up story about neuropazine poisoning? You might be surprised by what people believe. I can convince them. And having experienced the negative effects of corporate negligence firsthand, a majority of people might force the world to place harsh restrictions on all human enhancement research. Overwhelmed by the weight of the ocean pressing against it. Everyone inside the structure will die. That's a solution? No one will be left to tell the world what happened, Adam. Nobody will be able to spin the story. Including me. The choice is yours. Do you believe you have the wisdom to choose an appropriate future for mankind? Or do you trust mankind to find the answers on its own? If you do this, the unadulterated truth in Darrow's confession may well convince mankind to cast all science and technology aside, to ensure that future generations grow up free and whole. Albert Einstein said, technological progress is like an ax in the hands of a pathological criminal. It took me a while, but I finally see his point. How often have we chased the dream of progress, only to see it perverted? More often than not, haven't the machines we built to improve life shattered the lives of millions? And now we want to turn that dream on ourselves, to fundamentally improve who we are. Experience has shown me how dangerous that can be. How many times, in the call of duty, did I almost fall into the trap of taking shortcuts, abusing my abilities or the resources at hand? I resisted. Barely at times, because I valued human lives and considerations. Can I truly despise others who fall? Technology offers us strength. Strength enables dominance, and dominance paves the way for abuse. Darrow understood this. He knew that using technology to become something more than we are risks losing our ability to love, aspire, or make moral choices. The very things that make us human. It also risks giving some men the power to make others what they choose, regardless of the cost to human dignity. The suffering Darrow inflicted is not the end of the world. It is merely the seed for change. And change never comes without pain. Sarif was right about one thing. It's in our nature to want to rise above our limits. Think about it. We were cold, so we harnessed fire. We were weak, so we invented tools. Every time we met an obstacle, we used creativity and ingenuity to overcome it. The cycle is inevitable. But will the outcome always be good? I guess that will depend on how we approach it. These past few months, I was challenged many times. 
But more often than not, didn't I try to keep morality in mind, knowing that my actions didn't have to harm others? Time and time again, didn't I resist the urge to abuse power and resources simply to achieve my goals more swiftly? In the past, we've had to compensate for weaknesses, finding quick solutions that only benefit a few. But what if we never need to feel weak or morally conflicted again? What if the path Saraf wants us to take enables us to hold on to higher values with more stability? One thing is obvious. For the first time in history, we have a chance to steal fire from the gods. To turn away from it now, to stop pursuing a future in which technology and biology combine, leading to the promise of a singularity, would mean to deny the very essence of who we are. No doubt the road to get there will be bumpy, hurting some people along the way. But won't achieving the dream be worth it? We can become the gods we've always been striving to be. We might as well get good at it. Freedom. To those who don't have it, it's more valuable than gold. But where should it start and end? We humans often think we have the right to expand, absorb, convert, or possess anything we need to reach our dreams. But time and time again, hasn't this led to conflicts with others who essentially believe the same thing? Looking back on the challenges I faced, at the way I often resolve them, I realize morality can become our saving grace. Most of the time, didn't I try to keep my values in mind, knowing how my actions would affect others? More often than not, I resisted the urge to abuse power and resources, simply to reach my goals more swiftly. I managed to hang on to my humanity. But the temptation to ignore it was always there. It's that temptation that so worries Taggart. He's not afraid of freedom. He's afraid of the chaos that erupts when individuals have nothing but morality to constrain them. He wants us to regulate enhancement technologies because he fears all that power, without limits, without guide rails to keep us from abusing it. Absolute freedom is no better than chaos. Society needs laws and regulations to protect it. So if the men and women behind Taggart need to work in the shadows, Pulling strings to enable us to head in a safe direction, will supporting them be all that bad? If they're as wise as Taggart says, how bad will their leadership be? I just hope they stand by what they say. Do I trust mankind to save itself? That's what Eliza was asking. The truth is... I don't know. After everything I've seen, all the fighting and the chaos around me, I only know what I want to believe. Somehow, human decency will triumph. These past few months, I've faced many life-threatening situations. I could have given up many times, but my need to know the truth, to uncover the secrets that others were hiding, and to survive, forced me to keep on going. Most of the time, I tried to keep my values in mind, knowing my actions did not have to harm others. I held on to my humanity, resisting the urge to abuse power or resources in order to meet my goals. And in the end, I got the job done. But does this mean I have the right to choose for everyone? No. 
Because it isn't up to me. It isn't up to Darrow, Sarah, or Taggart either. Ordinary men and women will have to decide together what course mankind should take. The kind of people who time and time again have picked and chosen the future in highly practical ways. Slowing change when it's negative, speeding it up when it's good. Can they do it again? I don't know. But I do know I'm not about to let anyone in this station, myself included, stand in their way. <laughs>